I wanted to do a Amigo OS status update because, uh, mainly because Brian asked me to. I hadn't planned that far ahead, so he said, could you do something for us? I went, oh, okay. <laughs> now, Tre Trevor covered uh, the hardware angle quite a bit. I'm going to do the software angle. Now, but before I do, I just want to do a little uh, demonstration on how serious I am about this project. So, just a moment. <laughs> I love that part. So I've got some props. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because <laughs> I heard on the web that somebody said oh, I'm not taking this seriously. So, <laughs> so I'm like, well, here you go. <laughs> I'm very serious about Amiga. There you go. <laughs> Who else would go to that much trouble? <laughs> Uh, yeah, eh? Eh? And I got, it's the only computer with balls. There you go. <laughs> I thought, what's that? My what left? Dress left. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, just, I don't. I don't know the term. <laughs> Yeah, my little hat, dude, it doesn't quite fit. <laughs> Apparently, uh, it's made more for children, because it fits nice on my four-year-old, but it doesn't fit on me. <laughs> or somebody got a big head. <laughs> or, or somebody has a big head, thank you. <laughs> that, that's been going around. <laughs> now, of, course, of course, the little balls, I, I'm pretty sure you can get them at Mega Kit. Always buy two, because it's just <laughs> ripe for jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just works. I, I've got pictures of other people with the hat, but I won't get into that. <laughs> it's not what you said last night. <laughs> last night was weird. That's all I know. <laughs> and if you didn't come to the show, tough luck. <laughs> so, uh, seriously though, <laughs> it's a good segue. Hey? Um, I have some good news and some bad news, so let's start with the bad news. As you know, or uh, uh, Trevor alluded to, uh, the netbook was unfortunately cancelled, the project. Now last year it was on hold because there was still some hope. Um, Aeon was brought in or volunteered or dragged kicking and screaming, whatever it was, into looking into the viability of, of fixing things up and no, it didn't work either. Um, I have a little statement from uh, Ben Hermans here, and it says, um, uh, despite best efforts by Hyperion and Aeon, we were unable to get acceptable and stable conditions and terms from the Chinese supplier. And that's basically the, the root cause of the problem. Um, couldn't get the hardware at a price point that made sense, uh, uh, in a quantity that made sense, without charging far too much for far too little power. So uh, the plan is to move on to another solution or two. And so those, are, those angles are looking at being looked into now. So uh, portable Amigas, right? Uh, we know there's lots of desktop hardware coming, so there's no problem there. But uh, the portable stuff, can't do it. It's difficult right now. Uh, the only alternative would be to uh, work on um, somebody else's used hardware, that kind of thing. But uh, that's not really interesting. So I'm going to stick with, uh, with the current plan and try to make a Amiga laptop. So that, that was, that's the major bad news. But uh, oh well, nothing I can do, unfortunately. Uh, on the good news side, Aeon Technology announced the Cyrus Plus beta test program. I'm excited about that because um, the beta test program for the X1000 was, uh, it was okay, but it was a little, little wild. So this time I'm hoping to narrow it down to 50 or fewer people that are passionate about beta testing and want to go, want early access to the board and want to actually have some fun with these, this very unique hardware. Very unique. Um, 
Not going to find it anywhere else, of course, because it doesn't exist anywhere else, unless you're buying uh, missiles or something. So, <laughs> uh, so if you are interested in the Cyrus Plus beta test program, we're accepting applications, I guess you'd say, right now. Send an email to contact at a-eon.com, as said in the press release. What are the qualifications? Qualifications? Um, uh, first off, it would be somebody who's kind of passionate and somebody who can be a team player. That's very important. And um, it's kind of a, <laughs> it's, hard, it's, it's difficult to judge. Um, you, it, it would be helpful if you had some electronics experience as well because it's an early board bring up kind of situation. On the other hand, it's also good to have some naive people that know as little as possible about boards and just click buttons. So I kind of have a mix in mind, right? But I, I want some of those techie people, you know, maybe a chip designer type person randomly thinking, and um, <laughs> maybe a, a, a naive person. Um, uh, oh, yeah. here's one here. Yeah. Uh, just, <laughs> I'm just thinking. Uh, <laughs> we've talked on IRC. <laughs> yes, question. So what's the price of admission? The, the price of admission. Well, the, the deposit is still being uh, bandied about. <laughs> yes. Admission is, yes, less than Nemo, but I have not been given a price point. Um, there will be a deposit. So you put your deposit down. Board shows up X amount of days, I hope, not months later. <laughs> And then, uh, and then you just go. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be a non-disclosure agreement, I assume, as usual. Yeah, and nothing too serious. Well, that's the Hyperion agreement. The, the Hyperion agreement, the usual one that we use. It's, uh, it's not, too, not too bad. <coughs> not too bad. And then uh, away we go. <laughs> and I'll, I'll be setting up a mailing list, a support forum. Uh, there's, there's an Amy update server we use. It's a private one. Uh, all sorts of things. So, so you can actually, you can actually beta test without being really, really into it, as well. So uh, don't be too scared if uh, people are worried about, oh, I'm no good at it. You know, uh, we do. <laughs> I had a, had this question yesterday. What kind of testing do we do? Is it formal? I'm like, no, it's totally random chaos <laughs> <laughs> testing. <laughs> <laughs> We do have we do have focuses though. We say, okay, uh, here's the Ethernet driver. Focus on that. You know, kill it, kill it. So that's what 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 happens on the mailing list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, other times it's it's a lot of search and destroy like testing is what uh, or seek and destroy testing where people will have their little area they're interested in and they'll kind of poke around in there. Like one guy will like printing a lot. You know, poke, poke, poke. Another guy's USB guy. So I, I like to try to find people that like little bits. I, uh, if, a, if there's a musician, uh, pick, the, pick that person to help with the MIDI stuff, right, and the audio stuff, <coughs> so on. So that's, that's kind of my approach to it, anyway. Cool. Yeah. So uh, looking forward to that starting up. Um, when, when's the timeline for that? Is it like January? <laughs> So CPU is the long lead times. First quarter, January, first quarter. So end of January. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So that's very soon. Yeah. <laughs> it's very soon. So, so what I'm hearing is we're just waiting on CPUs. All the other parts are ready to go. So that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there you go, Cyrus beta test program. Any more questions about that? Like what, what do I have to do if I join, that kind of what, thing? What chip will they use? What chip? That's the 5020, I believe. Yes. Uh, what's the clock rate? It's, it's in the press release. <laughs> I, um, there's copies of this over on the table over there, and it should be on the web soon if it's not already. Be on the web soon, so. Yeah, okay. 
is coming soon, so we can get details and all the specs on the board. Because I, you know, it's it's a pretty large commitment, money-wise. So you want to know what you're going to get. Yes. 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 And you just don't want to do it for fun, really. <laughs> Yes. So these will actually be boards that will that the beta testers will be building, correct? Well, when we ran the X one thousand program, you got a board, yeah. and you you either bought all your supplies from Amiga Kit yeah. or approved vendor kind of stuff. So we know this power supply works. We know this graphics card works, right. or you take your chances. Right. So we kind of had a mix last time, <laughs> and uh, Lots of chances were some there. people took their chances. <laughs> In the, in the end, it was good, but I mean, if you fry your board and it's not our fault, sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> there's warranty, of course, but <laughs> if it's your fault. <laughs> I should say that no one fried their board and didn't get a new board back if they did. Yes, on the X1000, nobody that did fry their board didn't get a board replacement. So that can't be guaranteed. Yeah. It's not guaranteed, but nobody went unhappy. So, but there, there, there was, you know, what I call sparking. So, <laughs> and you spark a board. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and you cry a lot. Yeah, you get this tightening in the chest. You go, ah. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. So the question is, uh, if I got you correctly, is uh, if there is a found, if we find a problem on the design, will you get a replacement? And I, I, it's it's difficult to say because we haven't found the problem, right? Now, usually, usually it's just it's just a manual modification if there is a problem with the hardware, and you can do it with a local board shop or yourself or you send it back to Amiga Kit, they solder it or Verisys, and then it comes back again. And then you pay for half the shipping, that kind of scenario happens. I've never heard of a board actually being so bad that you have to just replace the whole lot of them. Yeah, yeah. they are, they are cautiously bringing up the boards. Like they, they're testing all the, all the drivers, all the hardware with Linux first to make sure it all runs. To the to the best they can test it, and then uh, then we, they will give it to us. <laughs> yeah, it's not just a off the off the line give it to you and hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there had there, there was a board modification to the X1000 that was last minute, so to speak, and it was okay. We ran it we ran through it fine. It, it, we did do a stop shipment and the whole bit. You know, they were starting to ship out and they went, whoa, 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 something happened. <laughs> All the beta testers, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, yeah. so that, that can happen. We just handle it uh, like adults, I guess you'd say. Yeah. We do try, try not to, uh, you know, burden everyone with the, the financial problem if it's a financial issue. You know, like, uh, usually, from what I what I understand is sometimes you just pay half the shipping or something like that, or none if you're really hurting or something like. That. Yeah, it's an individual basis. Yeah, you know, each each person is, is in a different scenario. But uh, nobody came out unhappy that I know of. So it was all it was all good. So we'll do it again. So we like to do this. <laughs> Any other questions about that beta testing and? What's involved? We'll see how many applications we get. How many do we have so far? Zero? One? <laughs> Tony put up his hand. <laughs> we have one. Oh, two. Two? Oh, you're in? I'm not going to get one. <laughs> no, I'll wait until it's tested. <laughs> <laughs> there's three. There's three gone out of 50. Get in now. <laughs> any other questions about that? Uh, any questions about the, the, the nap book? I kind of glossed over it, but nothing much to say there. Cancelled? Oh, well. 
Yes? Just, just to be clear, um, the OS did actually boot on it, right? Yeah, it booted fine, yeah. It wasn't some sort of... Oh, it wasn't... No, no, I got... I have... I have the source commits in this SVN, in the kernel, sitting there, just compiled it. Just want to make certain that everyone... You know, it's, I know there's some yeah. rumors by certain people <laughs> around the forums that, uh, you know, it never existed, yada, yada. No, it's fine. People it existed. Generous, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a, just a shame the manufacturer did, didn't work out. It didn't work out. But uh, I, I wish we didn't announce it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it wasn't my decision at the time. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't think I said I really wanted to announce it, but yeah, I, anyway, that, that was like three years ago now, wasn't it? Oh my goodness. Two? Two, two years. Oh, it's been two. Okay. Two, two amulets. <laughs> yeah, I said, yeah, we're making one. It was, it was a good time to actually, if we shipped it that first half a year, it would be, it'd be fine, but now it's like, what was that, a uh, 52, what was the chip in there? MPC 52 something? Can't remember now. 51, 21E. 51, yeah, an E. Yeah, it was a little sluggish back then. Now it would be. It was a little sluggish back then. It was really sluggish. It really sluggish back then? Yeah, okay. I found it a little sluggish when I was running it. It's like, uh, yeah. it's okay. It's for playing videos in an audible. It's, yeah, for playing videos in an automobile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, but it was portable. That was nice. Anyway, <laughs> can't linger too long. <laughs> okay, I'll move on to the next item on my list here. Uh, it's Gallium 3D status update. Um, I got one. I was curious myself. What's going on there? <laughs> So Hans, Hans Jorg provided me with uh, some information on what's going on there. Um, of course, he's always said this before, but the software implementation for Gallium already works fine. Renders, everything's going. Uh, it's got uh, Mesa or Mesa, some version of that, a, mo a high version of that running on it, no problem. Uh, but it's software. So you're talking, you know, five pr frames per second kind of stuff. Unacceptable for... 3D games. So he's been focused on the next step, which is porting what he calls Win, well, what they call WinSys. Now, WinSys, I had to look this up because I didn't know what WinSys was. It, on Linux, WinSys is called DRI, Direct Rendering Infrastructure. WinSys will take the Gallium stuff and talk to the DRI to get the hardware to talk to the rest of the framework. So that's the final step. That's the step where your OS is adapted to the Gallium drivers. That's it. Once that's working, it's done. So everything else is done. So that's good. That's good. Uh, he, he mentioned some of the challenges that he's faced along the way, uh, which he didn't expect to have so much trouble with. Uh, for example, uh, the whole thing must be reentrant, thread safe, and multi-core capable. He, they have to make sure it worked with multi-core from the start because they knew it's coming, so that was uh, difficult. Um, it must also run on a bare minimum system. Like It's easy to just make it work on the latest hardware, but what about classic users? Like we, gotta, we gotta, can't just abandon them, right? So you want something. Maybe it could, be, it could work minimally on a classic, who knows, right? So uh, you wanted to make sure it worked on the bare minimum. Uh, SAM 440, perhaps, EP. Like you want to want to see what you can get. Uh, also efficient. And the other thing you wanted was it had to be possible to load non-Gallium drivers. Because that's not the end, end all of anything, right? There might be another framework coming along for another chipset, so you got to be ready for it. So you want to be able to use their drivers. So with all that in mind, he came up with this design, implemented it. It's done. Now he's just finishing the WinSys. So that's the current status. Any questions? It's pretty technical. But uh, Gallium uh, enables 3D accelerated graphics. So you, you get your fancy cues flying around, your, your movies all smooth, you know, all that all that wonderful stuff that you expect. Because 
Like, for example, I always pull, pull it, the, uh, this little thing, it's got hardware acceleration, works pretty good. <laughs> CPU doesn't do much, but boy, does that work nice. Hey, <laughs> you can play your, your videos and hardware acceleration. <laughs> um, what else do I have here? X kernel. Yes. Yes, it helps everything. So the idea would be to adopt the OS to use as much hardware acceleration as you can. Yeah. It's very similar to custom chips on the classic, yeah. Except this is a modern version of that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the difficulty with that, those 3D chipset is they're, they're in, incredibly complicated. Incredibly complicated. You need teams of people to write a driver, not a person. So the only way to get it for, in a reasonable amount of time for us was to leverage what the open source community and others have already done. That only makes sense. So that's what they're trying. Yep. Okay, well, move on. So, oh, okay. Oh, yes, uh, Hans de, Roo de Reuter also um, helped pave the way for the gallium because Picasso 96, 96, <laughs> likes to conflict uh, with, uh, with gallium if you don't do it right. So he, he has developed mechanisms that allow them to live together simultaneously, which was almost thought impossible at one stage. But um, he, he's, a, he's a miracle worker, that guy. So it's like, thumbs up, Hans. <laughs> he managed to, to get the old Picasso to play nice so that we can actually make this happen, which is, which is great. Because I know in the very beginning, it was like, uh-oh, it's not going to play nice. We're going to have to rewrite Picasso. It's going to be another year right? <laughs> on top of the basic schedule. So thank goodness he got that working. Anyway, uh, X kernel. Well, what, what we call the X kernel. Uh, X for experimental, whatever you want to call it. X for X1000, because that's what it currently runs on. Well, no, actually, it runs on two boards now. <laughs> X1000 and Cyrus Plus. That's our multi-core kernel. It's uh, not to get into too much detail, but uh, we branched from the main kernel to make our multi-core kernel. So makes sense, right? Because you have the single core kernel, multi-core kernel. And the X kernel is coming along nicely. Uh, it's, well, very, very nicely, actually. I'm quite uh, happy with that. Got a status update from Thomas, who does our X kernel. <laughs> what we call the X kernel, which will become just the kernel at some point. But um, I think this may have been mentioned before, but the scheduler was rewritten in C. That was step one. Because the scheduler was always assembly language before this point. And uh, that makes it a real pain to modify. So that's been done. It sounds like it's running at full speed now, too. Last time I read in, uh, in the forums. Because, you know, there's always a speed differential when you do something in C at first. So you've got to optimize things. Uh, the latest thing he's done is remove the reliance on all the underlying data structures. And one thing he mentioned was exec base task lists. You know exec base? Uh, any programmers around? There's exec base, which has your list, uh, list of ready tasks, running tasks, and suspended tasks. These lists are all now, well, you don't want to be using those, or they're duplicated per core as well, right? Because you want one per core. And there's this nasty this task pointer as well, which, which is something that we've been using way, way back in 1.3. Needed some tender, loving care. Uh, I, I mentioned that to Lyle. Uh, <laughs> his code actually used that pointer. <laughs> that would be the bars and pipes code. The bars and pipes code used that pointer. It's from the 1.3 era, I believe. Yeah. Yep, so that's a, a naughty little thing to do. So we'll fix that up. <laughs> There's going to be some code changes required to get it to work on the other cores, so we'll do that. Um, his next steps would be to move the schedule to run on auxiliary cores. So the scheduler runs on one core right now, 
but we want it to run on the other cores, the auxiliary cores, as they're called. So he's doing that, and then all cores schedule tasks independently. Of course, that's the next logical step. And then finally, it would be load balancing between the cores. So you'd be flipping around, like runs on this core, then flips to that one, then back. And like most other systems do, right? But it, it's, you can go in stages, so there's no, no need to just jump right to the ultimate scheduler immediately. But uh, so he's having fun. He, he did give some timelines, but I don't like to say timelines because then people say, well, you said it would be done, blah, right? But uh, it sounds like uh, we're down to, to multiple weeks versus months, so it sounds good. Two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. yeah, two weeks. Yeah, just two more weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Len. <laughs> just two more weeks. <laughs> that old joke. I think that's from Amiga Inc. <laughs> yes? Yes. All the programs run on a single core. Yes. All the programs run on a single core. Well, there's two two kind of uh, things to think about. Um, if your program's already single-threaded, you don't care, it doesn't make any difference to have multi-core. The only difference would be if there's more than one program that's single-core running at the same time, because one runs on this core, one's on run, run, one runs on that core. Like we can get UAE running on one core, and the rest of the OS running on the other core, and then UAE's not bothering you, right? So that's handy. Then there's the next step, which is to make your program multi-core aware, and you're starting to throw processes all over the place and, and uh, bringing them back again. It's a, a map reduce problem if you, or a pattern if you know Google. You, you map your problem out and then you reduce it down. Yeah, so, uh, that, but you have to design it that way. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't magically make everything faster, of course. Yes? How is the threat model actually handled? How much of the stuff is the scheduler and how much does the application design handle? So the question is, what's, what's the thread model, basically? Right. What does that look like? I mean, if I, I, mm -hmm. I presumably you start with a single process, that process is parent of all other threads that you might spawn. Do you have to physically tell it where to go? Uh, no. You create the thread and the scheduler handle whether or not you have to assign it to? No, when you're threading, you don't tell it, I want to go in core X. And no, not, I mean, not normally. I don't know no. how this looks. No, you don't normally do that. Uh, I don't think Thomas would like that because it's kind of a OS decision. It's not, don't want to let the programmer play. However, this is Amiga. <laughs> so, if he wants to. How do threads get scheduled? How do I know where they are? Do I need to know where they are? Do I just use a find task function? Yeah, you don't you don't need to know where the where the tasks are. It'll it'll find them for you. Yeah, but uh, I would find it interesting that that uh, you know being in, being our own OS, we can do whatever we want. So why can't we just say, I want to run on the free core over there. I'm going to run over there, and if I can't, I'm going to whine and complain and pop up a requester. You know? <laughs> we could do that. Why not? Right. It's kind of an interesting idea, in a way. Um, other OSs, you know, they hide that completely. You have no possible way to say, I'm going to run here and run there. What makes these immensely complicated if you had to? If you, it would be very complicated if, if you had to, yes. Right. Now, but having the choice is interesting. Uh, is there a plan elsewhere in the operating system to take advantage of this? For example, updating async WV to uh, yeah. uh, be multi-threaded so that Well, generally, you don't want to have that kind of control, like with async WB, and say, I, if it spawns multiple processes, you sh usually let the scheduler figure out where it goes. I know. My yeah. point is, is, it, is that going to happen? In other words, does anything need to be done on other components of the operating system to take advantage of the new Oh, do you need to do anything yeah. special? You. Yes, okay. me as a programmer guy, do I have to put a flag on or something like that to say, hey, I'm multi-core, let me go over there. That, that's, uh, that's kind of in the air at the moment. I'm trying not to, but uh, 
MEGA being what it is, might be forced to, because uh, the shared memory model, the way it works, a lot of people abuse that. And we might have to say, OK, if I spawn a new process, I have to say I'm multi-core aware, and I'm allowed to be scheduled on the other cores. Right? That's one easy way out. You say, OK, I'm, I'm aware. I'm taking the risk. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything naughty. <laughs> <laughs> Take that man away. <laughs> yes, any, any other questions? No, not for now. So that's, that's my uh, update on the X kernel. We absolutely need some kind of multi core support because. Well, all these chips come with two cores, so I don't want one core sitting there doing nothing. That's very boring. <laughs> so, oh, well, now four cores, yes, yes, and then it goes on from there. <laughs> so, <laughs> might, might get some more of that later, <laughs> more information about that later. <laughs> anyway, um, my next sub subject was Amigo S 4.2. It's like, well, where is it? Right? You want to? <coughs> well, 4.2 depends on gallium 3D. So there you go. <laughs> I just told you where gallium 3D was. Not done. Therefore, no 4.2. Uh, but um, we're going to at least have gallium 3D in 4.2, like the next major release. Maybe it'll be 4.3, but right now we call it 4.2. <coughs> for no multi-core support. Uh, multi-core may or may not be in 4.2 depends on its stability at that moment in time, right? I don't want to hold back a software release just because we're waiting for a feature. I'd rather, you know, Hyperion charge a little less for that one and then have the next one, maybe an upgrade scheme, whatever, like a discount. I don't want to buy it multiple times just to get features usually, but we'll see how, what Hyperion thinks, right? So I, I know I would be a little bit peeved if I had to pay, you know, full price today for Gallium, full price later for multi-core. Maybe that's what they're going to do, but I wouldn't like it too much. So we'll see how it works out. Depends on timing with the features. That's a business decision. So. <laughs> um, with that in mind, I want to talk about 4.1 update 7. Um, I feel that we need to do an update 7 because Cyrus is going to be done pretty darn soon. So we have to have a release to go along with it. And that means a bootable ISO as well. So we need to make another bootable ISO baseline and move on again like we did with, what was that? Oh, it depended on what platform you were on. Um, the last bootable ISO we had was kind of a mix because each platform was at a different stage. So some of them said 4.1 update one, some had just 4.1. <laughs> so it was kind of an interesting scenario. <laughs> so I want to do another update to draw a line in the sand and then we can ship that. Now if you're in the beta testing program, it's just called Amigo S. You're just running that. You're not running a sp specific version, you're running the latest beta stuff that we gave you. It's got no name. It's just it. <laughs> we only stick a name on it when we're going to ship it out the door. <laughs> that makes sense. Any, any questions on that? Yes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 4.1 update 5 was when we did the X1000. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we brought everybody up to there. And then with, with uh, Amy Update, everybody's at the same level again. So what I can do is just take the current update 6 plus all the updates and just call it 7, update 7. Done. <laughs> Does that have all the Radeon drivers and such for the current state of the Anyone that's uh, licensed for the Radeon driver, yes. Yeah, see, the Radeon driver is a third-party driver. So if you already paid for it, yeah. It's, it's in your ISO. But if not, you've got to go buy a license yeah, and then put it on. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. X-1000 yeah. is included, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm. Excuse me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's a good question. Because um, we're kind of moving to a model where third parties are providing drivers as well. Aon for sure. Uh, Acube has also provided drivers, but they haven't made it a separate sellable product. Not yet that I remember. They, they give it to you for free. So it really depends on the company what they want to do. It's free right. to yeah, you always pay for it. Yeah, you always pay for it. It's just whether you see yourself paying for it. <laughs> Put it that way. Yeah, no, nothing's technically free, right? Because you have to recover the investment on the programming, so you you got to pay either way. Um, moving on to update six, going down for two for update seven, update six. So I released an updated SDK in a real darn hurry just before the show. Uh, we used that during the programming class. I think it worked out pretty well, the guys who were in the class. Seemed to work, good, good. So that was first cut at the SDK. I'm gonna do another one when I get home because <laughs> I missed a whole bunch of tools and uh, other little niggly bits that uh, weren't done in time. Uh, I also wanted to point out that since update six came out, we updated at least 58 components in the OS. So anybody who already has Amigo OS knows this because they just click software update on their menu and it says, hey, go get your uh, free, free bug fix, just like you, you do on you know, Windows or Mac or whatever. So we've released 58 component updates. Um, we actually released even more updates than that, but some components were updated more than once. Because I know we goofed up the click to front thing. So that, that was a little bit messed up for like a week or two, and then we fixed it up again. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the beauty of updates, you know, you can make a mistake, it's okay. Some people had heart attacks for some reason. <laughs> they couldn't click the front for a minute. <laughs> but we'll just release another update, fix it up, <laughs> don't panic. <laughs> Well, we have yeah, and plus there's a rollback, yeah. So I didn't know why it was such a panic, but there it was. <laughs> so we had one, one mess up for sure. I don't think there was many others on the update program. Uh, sound platform speed ups. Oh yeah, yeah, Acube's been really nice, providing a lot of um, nice speed ups for SAM owners. So if you're 440 or 460 EX owner, you noticed it's probably a little snappier now. Probably going. Um, so that's nice. That's nice. I really, really want to uh, applaud Acube for that because they put a lot of effort into it. Uh, the, the, what they're basically doing there is uh, using their system on a chip and turning on certain features like DMA channels, turning it on. We can do the same thing with the X1000. It has how many DMA channels, Lyle? More than I've counted so far. A lot. A lot, a lot of DMA channels sitting there idle at the moment. <laughs> so if you think it's fast now, <laughs> yeah, give us some time. <laughs> uh, the I was looking through the data sheet on the 5020, and it just got so lots of DMA channels again. So these these chips have all sorts of little tricks you can do to get them going even faster. So what what we normally do is we port it as quickly as we can and ship it as quickly as we can and then improve it. Because if you wait, people are sitting there twiddling their thumbs and I don't like waiting, so I'd rather ship it and then improve it than just hold it back until it's absolutely positively perfect and then ship it. So I, that's my attitude. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like Brian said, people break it anyway, so. <laughs> Why wait? <laughs> uh, in update six, I also added a new stack tracing debug API. That's nice. Finally, we can do stack traces from third party programs without uh, copying and pasting code around. So that's really nice. I don't know, we, we, we waited way too long for that. What that means is third parties can now do their own stack traces and improve their software much faster with less headaches. So I'm hoping to see a, a jump in quality 
eventually in the next uh, couple of months from other third parties as they discover how to use this, these new facilities. Uh, moving on to another one, unless there's questions, update six. No? Oh, I guess I should mention, um, uh, if you want to know what the updates are, I added a new report. If you go update.amigos.net, it'll list all the components that have been updated. So if you're just curious, if you've just been updating automatically, you don't care maybe, but there's a full list of all the updates. Because somebody kept asking me, what's the, what did we update? So now we know. Another interesting item. Um, we now have a fuse and an NTFS port working on Amigo S. Now, Fuse is a interesting little API that allows you to have multiple file systems um, using the same API and talking to the Linux kernel. It was made for Linux or Unix in general, POSIX, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so that opened up this NTFS 3G port now this is not, not a Hyperion project. This is a little side project that I always wanted to do. So I did it. <laughs> so I found a programmer willing to take the abuse and he's been going nuts like crazy on this thing. And um, he ported uh, Leaf Sol Solomonson's, I hope I got, hopefully I got that right, file sysbox, file sysbox it was called. Now this guy put in, oh, must have been a year or two of work to get that, that thing working the way you needed it to work. Uh, it's, it's available on uh, Morpho S and it's a part of that as well. So Leaf said, well here, you can have, have the code too. Uh, so totally cool. So he took the code and <laughs> he, also, he also gave it to the, the AWOS group too. So uh, cool, that's, that's really nice of the guy. Instead of just hoarding it like, like a lot of uh, developers do, let other people work on it. So we've been working on that, got it all up and running. So that gives us the fuse layer, it's called. And then the NTF NTFS 3G port is another third party that creates that. It's a GPL file system. Uh, I didn't write down the name of the company. There's a company behind it that does this. And they give you a free open source version. And then if you pay money, you can get the really good version, which is private source. So it's kind of a way to drum up sales in a way and let you try it on your device. So they, they cater to the embedded market as well and they have a super fast Mac OS version. So you can get NTFS on Mac OS that works reasonably well. So that's, that's what they do. And they let everyone have a free copy of this. So nice of them. So we took advantage of these two free copies of software and got it working. And last time I checked on the beta list, it was working quite well. So you can pop in a USB stick in NTFS, read and write, pull it out, go to the next thing. Just like uh, FAT, F-A-T. <laughs> and because of the fuse layer, we can do other file systems like EXFAT whatever else, uh, ext3, all sorts of file systems. What is Linux? Uh, Linux, you can use either the kernel version of the file system for extra speed or the fuse version, so you, you get a choice. Well, I'm just trying to think with like the X1000, if mm -hmm. we've got a second drive in our computer that's not accessible right now through Amiga OS, that's got a Linux installed, would that be accessible at that point? Accessible. Well, if, if you're running Linux, it can only, only Linux so can see I'm it. So if I'm running an Amiga, would oh. I be able to... Oh, see the Linux drive. Right. And the data that I have on it. <laughs> I'm not the person to ask. <laughs> but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You want to mount that Linux drive across in Amiga OS and just get direct access to it. Right as if you're on Linux. It's right. just a data drive. Right, yeah. that's like, yeah. rather than have to boot up into that, I can... Yeah, instead of booting screen. Linux, get going at it, and then you should be able to boot Amigo S and just get at that same drive yep. without moving. My computer, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I know technically you can. I'm just wondering if we can on Amigo S right now. Because <laughs> there, there's some underlying features that you need to pull that off. Um, yeah, I know who to ask. <laughs> and I'll find out, but that's a good question. That's a good question. 
it, I know you can do it, and other, other um, OSs could do it too. But there, I'm wondering if we're missing that key component or not right now. So I'll find that out. Because yeah. right now I just use a USB stick. Right. Same thing. Yeah. But it's portable. It's like unplug plug. You want the drive to stay where it, where it is. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Stay put. Just share the data. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, um, oh, was it Siamese or something? Used to, used to loop back the Ethernet or something to do that? Or loop back the serial or, so that both the OSs, both sides could see the same data? Some kind of trick, yeah, yeah. It's a similar kind of idea. <laughs> yeah. It's technically possible. It's just a, a matter of software. And this, since I'm not <laughs> Linux, you know, guru or anything, if for mm -hmm. some reason I screw something up where I can't boot up into it anymore, well, important files I may have over there I can grab. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I, I hope to have the NTFS and Fuse stuff released soon. Uh, it seems to be coming along nicely. What the beta testers have noticed on the list, too. Uh, uh, that's Frederick who's working on that one. and done a bang-up job. We'll have to do a nice big blog entry on what, what happened, give you a full, full details on, the, on that story when, when the time is right. Don't want you to suffer unless you're a beta tester. <laughs> but, you know, the worst thing is that you, with a file system, if it screws up your data, you get pretty mad. So I don't like releasing them until I'm sure they're, they're good quality, right? So that's a major component. It's like, oh, <laughs> you don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> yes. Yes, Windows drives, <coughs> NTFS, yep. Read and write, yes, read and write, yep. It's very handy, it's good, because yeah, good, uh, I mean, how many people just have one computer in their house and nothing else, right? Not many, so it's good to have other system, other file systems, uh, so you, Can you format? Yes, yes, actually the, there's a tool set that goes with it. Yeah, I didn't mention that. Oh, uh, it's not just, yeah, the command line tools at the moment. Yeah, but uh, you can make them GUI-ish. <laughs> uh, that's something that was supplied by the NTF NTFS 3G guys as well. There's a set of tools. There's a format and a fix and a check and a report and a couple of things. Yes, yes, Fuse. How, how good is the Fuse implementation, yeah, right? I've done tons yeah. of well, the, the good news is, <coughs> the good news is we're, we're releasing the source code with it. So, <laughs> full documentation is available. <laughs> now, the most important thing is um, support is available because we'll be talking on the support forum about this, right? So as a, as a developer or a curious onlooker, you're like, well, what if I want to try this ZFS port? What's it take, right? Is this going to be an OS component or is this going to be a third party uh, offering? Is it going to be OS component or not? Well, it's my component, so to speak. <laughs> ah, I, it should be part of the OS. Yeah, I, I want it always on there. Why not, right? Call, we'll call it a contribution, of course, but uh, it would be something you can assume is there. Because I don't see why it would be an option to install it. I mean, it's small. There's a library and there's a, a file system file. Just two things. Why would we not just throw it in there, right? Well, sometimes the file system, file system implementations are not small. Uh, and then what you're talking about, like ButterFS, for example. Well, NTFS is fairly small. It, yeah, they can get, these file systems can get enormous, like, you know, riser FS or something. It, 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 Blow your mind. Uh, <laughs> I'm well aware of that. <laughs> yeah. but I just, I'd love to be able to have something. I'd love to have a, a, a true journaling file system available to us. A true journaling file system. Yes. It's, it's been a dream of mine for like 20 years now, I think, <laughs> for Amiga. <laughs> we have these so called Amiga file systems, like FFS was invented for floppy drives. You could still use it on a hard drive. Uh, SFS, they, that was a, 
public effort, or no, it was a private fellow that did that, and then he released the source code at some point. But it, it's totally custom. Nobody else on the planet uses SFS. Uh, yeah. That brings up an interesting other, other question. What are we looking at as far as uh, OS 4.2? Are we looking at the with regards to file system offerings? 4.2 file systems? No. Well, uh, It's on the list, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how open uh, the author is to discussing it at this point. <laughs> I don't want to put, put him on the spot or anything, so we'll just we'll just glance over that one. <laughs> but uh, I definitely want a better file system than all the ones we have now, and I would also like a journaling file system of some kind for reliable data that handles exceptionally large drives and journaling so we can get away from these little niggly things like with SFS, GXFS. They, they aren't, they aren't uh, near the grade that it needs to be for handling large hard drives. And so the solution right now is to back up often, right? Yes, yes, storage pools, yeah, 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 that kind of stuff. I would like that. And uh, I would at least like to be able to talk to a NAS, you know, direct, that kind of thing as well. So uh, I, wa I, want, I want to go there. <laughs> I want to go. So I'm trying to enable that little step at a time. You know, Fuse is a nice step. Fuse is a big step. Right, that's a nice step.
take a smaller drive and you clone everything to a larger drive. Oh, you, you mean just to adjust the file tables or whatever it is and then bang it. That, that's a, that's a software. You don't have, no. But I mean, extend, what do you call it? Extending file tables or something? I can't remember the feature's name. But I know what you mean. You just flick a switch and all the, suddenly you have a four terabyte drive. And you didn't have to copy anything, right? That kind of trick. Yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, I don't know if the file system plays as an important part in that as the lower level layer. There's another layer below this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there, I know there's another layer below the file system that does that trick. And we've talked about it. I remember the developers talking about it because I don't understand it. I never delved into that area. And they're going, yeah, yeah, we should do this, do this. Uh, yeah. And they throw an acronyms back and forth. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead, do that feature. I like that. <laughs> it's in the sites. But nobody's committed to a project yet. <laughs> yes, yes. Hmm? It's oh, multi-user support isn't uh, isn't on the list yet. No. No. Yeah, it, it'd be nice, but. Uh, but uh, there's other things that need to be done first, so. <laughs> yes. Multi-user uh, in an Amiga environment doesn't make a lot of sense. You can have multiple profiles, but multi-user, no, it's not going not gonna to cut it. It's not going to work. So. At least on a file level. No, not on a file level. No, no. <laughs> yeah, partitions, perhaps, like volumes, yes. Yes, I could, I could see that working. But file level, ooh, eh, difficult. I know they were trying to. Commodore was trying to do that, but uh, didn't get far enough fast enough. And then, of course, everybody's just throwing the rules to the wind. And uh, that's the end of that. But we do have owners, file owners. Yep, we have groups. It's sitting in there. Yep. Yes, if you had a business, that's important. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Buy more Amiga. <laughs> yeah. I like, I like that solution that Paul had. Buy more. So each person has one. That's a much better idea. <laughs> that's a business model we could get behind. <laughs> Moving on to my next, uh, next topic was new developers. So we have some new developers added to the team since last time, at last Amy West. Uh, Frank Menzel was one, Thomas Klaus, Frederick Wickstrom, he, he's the uh, guy doing the NTFS stuff, and Tobias Seiler, or Seiler, is also added to the team recently. So uh, good for them. <laughs> Just wanted to mention their names. Yeah, these guys each have their own little niche. Couple of graphics fellows. Uh, Frederick's a do anything kind of guy, and then Tobias is uh, more of a classic focus. So uh, we haven't forgotten about classic. He disappear for a couple months and then come back sometimes. Yeah, this, this happens because we can't pay them full time. So. Uh, if it is if it is a successful project, we'll eventually replace Syrian. Well, USB is Syrian. No, not serial. Oh, Syrian, yeah. It, it's just another module. Yeah, it, there's no replacement. It's just another. It's just USB three. Yeah, it's like XHCI. It's, it's just another module. Yeah, yeah. No, there's. It's possible to replace that, but that's. Uh, well, it depends who's paying the bills. So, <laughs> like you, you could you could go uh, get a license for the Poseidon stack, for example, and try to port that over. Uh, Chris, uh, probably. He sold to uh, pretty much everybody else now. I don't think he would have any qualms with selling it. I don't think it would be cheap. Sorry, MIDI, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
MIDI over USB. What, a, what an interesting idea. <laughs> you, you, don't you know about MIDI over USB? No? There's, there's a driver. There's a driver. Yeah, I know. That's why. Uh, uh, for OS4, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. No, this is Syrian. <laughs> yeah. What? Never mind. Any other uh, questions from anybody? Because that was it for my list of things to discuss. Don't want to bore you too much. <laughs> so we soldier on. Let's get, let's get Cyrus Plus out the door now. <laughs> One of these days they'll let, let me stop and work on some other stuff for a while. <laughs> like printer drivers. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Do you have other speaking engagements throughout the world, or is this it? I have no other speaking engagements. <laughs> I didn't think so. Uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to check and make sure that that was the case before I, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure that you all appreciate uh, the level of expertise that we have here in Stephen and that he's willing to share it with us. And uh, I'd, I'd like for us to give him another hand for doing so. Oh. So, Bill, are you ready for your uh, Skype session? Okay. Okay. Trevor, but I can't. No. <laughs>